Hi eSkate Builders. So today in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the intricacies of building a really efficient drivetrain for your electric skateboard. Now there are a lot of things that work together. They're directly related to each other. If you change one thing, it can affect another. So we're gonna go through and talk about all the little bits and pieces in the drivetrain that combine together to get an end result. So when I say drivetrain, what am I talking about? Looking at this setup here, we've got, well, the motor, which spins and it turns the motor pulley, which has a belt on it that goes to the wheel pulley. Now you can't really see that in there, so I've just got them separate here, but you can see the fingers there fit in to the spokes and drives the wheel. That's the simple mechanical side of a drivetrain. Now, there's a little bit more that you need to understand. To get your head around this, you need to understand the six key elements of what makes up an electric skateboard propulsion system. I mentioned before, the pulleys. You've got the motor, you've got the wheels, but the other thing that's important is the battery, or more specifically, the voltage of the battery. So there's six things that all work together to get the drivetrain or the propulsion system working at a speed that is useful for humans. So out of those six things, there are five variables that you need to decide on to get the result that you want. So number one is the gearing reduction ratio. That is the difference of teeth on this big one to the teeth on the small one. The motor KV, revolutions that your motor spins based on voltage the battery voltage itself, because that dictates the, the revolutions or, or the RPM of the motor. The wheel diameter. The wheel diameter is important because if it gets bigger, you travel further per rotation. If it gets smaller in diameter, you travel less distance per rotation. And the final variable is your desired top speed. That's the beauty of building your own electric skateboard. You can customize the drivetrain to get exactly what speed you want. Now, just a quick word of importance here. You often see people who are like, I wanna make a skateboard that goes 60 kilometers an hour. If you grab the world champion downhill skateboard champion and you talk about speeds with that guy, he's not gonna think 60 kilometers an hour is that fast he's gonna think it's pretty slow because those guys fly down hills so rapidly, I mean, and they are trained athletes. I mean, that's what they're doing. They're professionals at it. So in urban environments, us average people, when we're riding around our electric skateboards in the street where there are cars, cats and dogs, there are other pedestrians, there are things that can prevent you from traveling at certain speeds. Aside from all that, common sense, right, has to prevail here. You really don't need to travel that fast because you could just get in your car. The other thing to think about with speed is electronics. There's like a tipping point where if you try to make the electric skateboard go too fast, what you're actually doing, what you're asking it to do is work with much more load on it. That's why it's super critical to design your electric skateboard propulsion system to reach the speed you want it to go. There's no point designing one that goes 60 kilometers an hour if you're only ever gonna ride at a maximum of 40. You really wanna dial it in. You wanna make sure that the maximum speed it can go is the speed that you want it to go because that's where the most efficient use of your energy will be. The other thing with speed is over about 45 kilometers an hour, the load on the motor increases drastically and it increases due to wind resistance. If you're traveling or wanting to travel at higher speeds than about 45 k's an hour, the wind resistance starts massively impacting the power that you need. It's exponential. So as you wanna go slightly faster, each kilometer faster, you need more and more power. Another few kilometers, more and more and more power. So design your drivetrain 
to reach the speed that you want to travel and you'll have an efficient drivetrain. I said there's five variables. You need to start limiting some of these variables. Okay, let's start with the first variable and that's wheel size. So most people will go with a wheel between 80 millimeters and 90 millimeters diameter. There are a few reasons. Firstly, those wheels commonly have a plastic core inside that have holes or spokes that you can bolt your pulley onto or in this case, the teeth fit into it. Smaller wheels, like here's an old skateboard wheel, you have to drill it out and obviously it's quite small compared to the diameter of the pulley, so it wouldn't make a really good selection. So going up in a larger diameter of wheel is something a lot of people want to do, don't get me wrong, because it makes the ride smoother perhaps, you can transition across cracks and bumps nicer. So if you do decide to go a larger wheel, what you will have to do is increase the reduction ratio. Otherwise, if you don't increase the reduction ratio, your top speed's gonna be really fast. To increase the reduction ratio, what you need to do is either add more teeth to the wheel pulley or take teeth away from the motor pulley. Okay, the next two variables that we should consider, we've selected our wheel size, we're going with 83 millimeters. The next thing we wanna do is work out the motor KV and the battery voltage. You may have seen my other videos where I've spoken about battery voltage, 24 volt, 36 volt. They're the most common. Once you've decided on your battery voltage, then with that knowledge, you can choose the correct motor KV. Now, the motor KV, just think about it in these, in these simple terms. It's the amount of times the motor will rotate per volt, okay? That's really simple. So if you have more volts, you will get this rotating faster. Simple as that. Now, 190 kV gives us a particular RPM, which is suitable for a 36 volt battery. If I was to lower the voltage of that battery, this would spin slower. Now, as you know, the speed that this spins dictates the speed we get at the wheel. So we've already said 45 kilometers is a great speed and we're gonna work for that. We've selected our 83 millimeter wheel. Now, we know our voltage and we know our motor KV. So this is where you start doing these calculations. I've done all the calculations and I know that a 15 teeth pulley on this motor with a 36 tooth pulley on this wheel and with this belt with an 83 millimeter diameter and a 36 volt battery, it, it gives me 45 kilometer speeds. Slightly more, but in the real world, you don't get exactly, I mean, there's a little bit of a loss. So 45 Ks is what speed you get. Now there are calculators you can use. Um, I'll link to it here. And you can actually type in all of these variables and work out what speed you want based on what battery you want, based on what KV motor you have. For my years of experience doing it, 190 KV is great, 83 millimeter is great, 2.4 reduction ratio and a 36 volt battery gets you a pretty good drivetrain.